I love this game like a lot. Tiny Rogues is an exceptional roguelite that I've been following for a little over a year now. With the latest Heaven and Hell update kickstarting Tiny Rogues' 0.2 era, the content present has practically doubled. Weapons, floor types, bosses, equipment items, playable characters, everything has all been increased twofold. And while some significant changes have introduced a surprising amount of complexity to what is a generally straightforward game, Tiny Rogues is in a better state than it's ever been. And I figured it was time to shed some light on a game that's already fantastic with an even brighter future ahead of it. Tiny Rogues is a seemingly simple game at first glance. You go through a set of 10 and later 12 floors fighting enemies, collecting food for stats and XP, find keys and bombs to open locked chests or go through blocked doors, and collect gold and souls to purchase items and services from various shops and NPCs. Unlike in many of its contemporaries, it completely nixes exploration from the equation in favor of pushing the player forward through a linear series of square arenas with little variation save for room size. This gives the game a breakneck pace that manages to alluringly beckon you from room to room, getting a constant drip feed of dopamine as you plow through hordes of enemies and bosses, getting some kind of reward in almost every room you clear. This streamlined approach to dungeon crawling really solidifies this game as a prime example of a great coffee break game. You know, one of those games you can easily pick up, play a run or two while sipping your Starbies and put down without a hassle. Combat is straightforward and satisfying with every weapon, including melee weapons, being ranged in varying capacities and are about as intuitive as you can get. Swords go slashy slashy, guns go bang bang, wands and staves go pew pew, and flails and bibles go... Hitting enemies and bosses gives satisfying visual and audio feedback that never gets old. The explosion sound on enemy death just has a nice pop to it that really gets the happy brain juices flowing. I also really enjoy not having to worry about ammo, stamina, or other resources when it comes to attacking. Every weapon gives you the liberty to just fire away. Even magic weapons can still be fired when out of mana due to the game's brilliant mana burnout system that rewards you with extra damage for keeping your mana up, but still lets you keep attacking when you're all out. Enemies and bosses do a great job picking up the slack left by the lack of environmental variety. Every floor and alternate floor has its own unique set of mobs that create an endless variety of bullet hell scenarios to weave your way through. Some enemies, however, make my blood vessels pop like the Titan submarine, like these dumb f skulls that shoot arena-wide spinning lasers. <laughs> bosses are the highlight, though, with over 40 different bosses that are incredibly satisfying to fight with some really fun bullet patterns and attacks that call for tight position and movement. They also don't overstay their welcome, with most bosses dying in less than 30 seconds as long as your build is scaling adequately. Overall, Tiny Rogues' combat just has a really nice flow to it that, while derivative, still manages to feel something unique to itself and complements the other rudimentary aspects of the game's design. Additionally, Tiny Rogues offers a huge assortment of 34 playable classes, each with starting perks and equipment that are significant enough to make them unique without being too strong as to make one particular class much better than the others. Well, for the first 17 classes anyway. The new batch of 17 classes we got with this update are all uniquely busted in their own way. I personally enjoy the availability of these stronger classes as they offer different but more streamlined paths to quite literally ascending to godhood in the dozens of runs you'll embark on. The other aspects of meta progression with the mastery tree and starting gifts also offer interesting upgrades and side grades that have a bit more thought put into them than the simple more health or more damage options present in other games. Although, as of writing this, the silk scarf starting gift might be a bit overtuned. Not by much, but definitely a little bit. Just a little. This approach to the mastery tree and starting gifts also carries over to the enhanced difficulty modifiers called cinders that offer similarly diverse changes to increase the challenge of runs for those who want it. It's a great foundation to promote a solid amount of variety before you even set on a run. This is where we get into the best part of the game though. Character builds. Tiny Rogue's true meat and potatoes is in the plethora of avenues available to the player to become absolutely busted. The game takes a lot of inspiration from action RPGs, most notably Path of Exile, and the methods at which you are meant to scale your character for endgame. In said action RPGs, a lot of the fun is in the theory crafting of character builds and finding synergies between the many different skills, equipment, weapons, and so on, but instead of having to devote dozens of hours to grinding character level ups and earning a PhD just 
to comprehend a no, no. monolith of a skill tree in the case of Path of Exile, Tiny Rogues compresses that experience down to less than an hour and forces you to improvise aforementioned character builds based on the plethora of traits, weapons, and equipment the game throws at you. You can do a build centered around procking a crap ton of lightning triggers to build stacks of shock as fast as possible that then trigger even more lightning damage. You could experience the glory that is cast on crit without literally melting your GPU. Or, for a more specific example, take one of my first successful runs. In this run, I found a sword that has a secondary beam attack that has a chance to trigger on every attack based on the luck stat. I then focused on fighting items and selecting traits that would increase my luck and attack speed to trigger this attack as much as possible. By the later floors, I needed to find a way to scale my damage even further. I ended up finding the Wedding Dress item, which causes the Charm debuff on hit, which on its own was not very useful for my build, but upon my next level up, the Arrogance trait appeared as an option, which grants a powerful damage buff with non-crits whenever you charm an enemy. Given I didn't have high crit chance, this was a huge boon for my damage output and led me to steamrolling the rest of the run. This is what gives the game such addictive staying power. Trying to MacGyver something powerful using the assortment of pieces the game hands to you during a run gives a sense of ingenuity that makes god runs feel earned rather than just handed to you despite the RNG that is present. It's a game that rewards you for learning and understanding the many different variables at play and how you can bring them together to create something powerful. Therein, though, lies what I think is the only major problem with Tiny Rogues, the learning curve. Now, this isn't to say the game is impossible to comprehend. It's actually pretty intuitive once you understand how everything works. The issue simply lies in how all of this information is presented. Nearly every item, trait, or anything else with a description contains several highlighted keywords that come with a respective text box explaining what that keyword means. The sheer amount of these keywords, and how the explanations for them can get so lengthy that they go off the goddamn screen, can only be described as information overload. Like, look at this trait description. During combat, periodically increment all of your active tally counters by 1, and your periodical effects by 0.25 seconds for every 2 units moved. Period. Kotex fits. Based on my analytics, I can assume that most of you will not get that joke. At first, I felt a bit alienated by these changes, since everything I learned at 0.1 about creating a successful build was completely thrown out the window. After sticking with it, though, I can say without a doubt that this overhaul to the itemization, traits, and stats has made what's already a good game great. And I implore anyone who may have been turned off by this update to give it another try. The developer has stated that they plan on improving the descriptions as well as creating an in-game wiki to explain all these different keywords better. Finally, I just want to touch on this game's presentation a bit. Visually, I find the game incredibly charming with its nostalgic arcadey graphics. The addition of a CRT filter and scanline effect, while a bit detrimental from a gameplay perspective, definitely helped nail the retro vibe the game is going for. Plenty of video settings are available to tweak these features to your liking if you don't care for them. Personally, I like to have a little bit of CRT, you know, as a treat. The highlight of Tiny Rogue's presentation, however, is the music. The music in this game is so unbelievably good. Like, just give this a quick listen. Miguel, if you see this, I'd put you on the same level as Toby Fox. You did a fantastic job. So yeah, Tiny Rogues, a game that's not even finished yet, is what I'd consider to be one of my favorite roguelites of all time. It's a game that isn't afraid to let its players become room-clearing, boss-melting maniacs in a way that doesn't feel like the game is handing that opportunity away for free. It's so addictive that part of why I've taken so long to make this video is, well, because I've spent too much time playing it rather than, you know, being productive. With the developer planning on three more expansions before the game's full release, Tiny Rogue seems to have nothing but a promising future in store, and I hope this video helps get more eyes on this project to help that future become a reality. Oh, also, it has fishing, so it's already perfect in my eyes. Mm-hmm. <laughs>